This video has to be made. and Frankly, it's probably gonna be a little bit heated. Why do people feel the need to label autistic people narcissists? So in this video, let's explore the differences between narcissism and autism and why it's completely inappropriate to throw these labels around like it's nothing. Welcome back, my friend. It's great to see you. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy, and I'm all about helping you increase your level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, well, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And the best part is you will join one of the most amazing communities you are gonna find. Bring this on, narcissism and autism. Why? Do some people feel the need to label autistic people narcissists? You don't sound like you're autistic. What you sound like is a narcissist. Oh, thank you, doctor. That's very helpful. There's a couple of things I wanna say straight off the bat. Number one, you will know from watching my channel and reading all my information, I'm not a doctor or a psychologist or a healthcare professional or an academic. I am just a regular, everyday, autistic guy sharing my own lived experiences as an autistic person. For some reason, there's this bizarre idea among some people that they think there's an actual correlation or connection between the two. Made even worse by the fact that then they take it one step further and say, you're, you're wrong, you're not autistic, you're just a narcissist. But I think it's important, it's got to the point now where enough is enough. As a member of a, a disabled minority, an autistic person as part of an autistic community, it just goes on for your whole lifetime that you're just a punching bag and that's okay. We refer to that as hate speech and we say it's hate speech because the impact of those words, of those ignorant words, are not only hurtful and hateful, but they're damaging. They can cause people to have mental illnesses, they can cause people to want to end their lives or to be twisted up in a whirlwind of anxiety and depression. And that's not acceptable. I'm not telling you you can't say what you feel. What I'm saying is you need to have some sort of understanding behind what you're saying to say to me directly on my YouTube channel, you don't sound like an autistic person or you're not autistic. What do you think that does to me, a person already disproportionately affected by mental illness? How does that affect my mental illness further by telling me I'm wrong? The medical healthcare professionals who are experts in the field who diagnosed me after a rigorous, robust assessment period are wrong and you're right. And you're, who are you? And then to add a layer, another layer, you're not autistic, you know what you are, you're a narcissist. Or I love the, the comments at the moment. People seem to think, you're not describing autism, you're just an introvert. You're saying the medical healthcare professionals that diagnose autistic people are wrong and you're right. But they also think that it's okay to make those things known. Okay, so the, the best way to break this down is to actually go through it methodically. So let's start by talking about narcissism. Now, again, I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm not gonna give you an academic lecture. No, 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 let's just talk about what we know on the basics of narcissism. So narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, is a personality disorder clearly. Okay, now it's characterized by grandiose self-identity, difficulty with or lack of empathy, jealousy and trouble with criticism and preoccupation with success. Let's discuss some of the, the main critical symptoms of narcissism. They include significant impairment in interpersonal function like intimacy and empathy, substantial impairment in sense of self, typically with a grandiose sense of importance, belief that one is special or unique to the exclusion of others, lack of empathy or theory of mind, so recognizing that others have emotions, arrogance, intense jealousy of others, preoccupation with feeling successful and the people they admire, obsession with fantasies of unlimited success, ideal love, power, brilliance, beauty requiring excessive admiration, failing to respond appropriately to others' expressions for attention. That's narcissism in a nutshell. Now let's talk about narcissistic traits, as we've just discussed, versus autistic traits. And we will unpack and show the clear and obvious differences and end this silly misconception once and for all. Starting with lack of empathy. A common trait of narcissists 
is a lack of empathy or interest in the feelings of others. Now, there's a misconception, and we've talked about this in many videos, that autistic people lack empathy. Uh, in essence, emotionless robots, unfeeling, uncaring. It's not true. I feel like this has been talked about by so many people across so many different platforms that it's utterly ridiculous to even discuss that. We now know autistic people can feel the emotions of others at a hyper level. The issue is then processing it in a way that convey that outwardly. But the feeling inside is really, really strong. If I'm watching a show I like, but then it suddenly, because I've got two boys. If it, if it involves people who are suffering or who are uh, in a bad situation or are feeling bad or are being abused or treated or there's kids involved that are in a bad situation, I have to turn the channel because I, it starts to make me feel so emotional and so anxious and so horrible. I don't want to see it. I don't want to be a part of that kind of suffering. I can't. It's like, no, that's I'm not, I'm, I don't want that. I want people to feel good. And so that's a personal experience on just one of the clear differences. There's an absolute empathy, interest, awareness of the feelings of others as an autistic person. Bottom line, autistic people can be hypersensitive to the feelings and emotions of others. As a neurodevelopmental disability, our issue will be processing the emotions and feelings we're picking up, how they're making us feel, and therefore conveying them back to a potentially neurotypical person in a way that they can understand we empathize with them. See, this is a double empathy problem. There's two separate operating systems and they can't connect. I'm feeling your pain. It's making me feel it deeply. I really want to convey that to you. I'm struggling to work out how to do it so you'll understand I'm conveying it and I'll understand that I'm conveying it in the way I want to. And it, it doesn't but that's a complete and utter difference. That's actually a breakdown on both sides. Autistic people are not self-absorbed. We are autistic with a different brain. And as a result, our autistic brain can sometimes struggle to understand and convey the feelings of not only ourselves, but the feelings of others. And like we've said, then it comes down to the added layer of being able to convey it in a neurotypical way. So without a basic level of understanding, an appreciation of how autistic people work, as in what I've just shared with you, we can be shut out of the world. You can go, well, and they reacted really oddly to that experience. Push them away. They're not autistic. They just don't care about people. That guy's a bloody narcissist. You know, like, and you see, and then we're shut out. And again, these are the kind of things that are throwaway lines to some people. But to us, it affects us deeply. Now I'd like to talk about social interactions. And again, I'm sorry in this video if I talk really fast, I'm legitimately and genuinely angered and energized and passionate about this. And it's not even for me, it's for like autistic kids, young autistic people, my son, the autistic community. It's just, I'm so sick of seeing these ignorant monsters with zero understanding or appreciation of autistic people or, or autism in general, try to tell autistic people who they are. This isn't a joke. This isn't a playground. These are real people you're talking about. The differences between narcissists and autistic people with regards to social interactions. It's established that narcissists actually use social interactions as a means of manipulation and control. In other words, narcissists view people and social interactions and situations as like a chessboard and the people are the pawns in a game. Now, from my own lived experiences as an autistic person, I well know that I can and some autistic people in social interactions can come across cold or uncaring or disinterested or rude or aloof all bad things, presumably. On top of that, you may have experienced a situation where you as an autistic person or the autistic person in your life only wants to or is only capable of jumping in when it's about something they're deeply passionate about all their special interests, or conversely, they just want to talk in this conversation about their special interest, a one-sided discussion or a one-topic discussion, which people can be interested in, but to an extent. But let's be clear, this is basic autistic Diagnostics, social interactions, communication. These are core diagnostic traits of an autistic person. These are known challenges. Autistic people can struggle with genuine challenges, relating to others, interacting with others, communicating in a neurotypically appropriate way, which 
is impossible if you have an autistic brain. And the basic other things like understanding verbal and nonverbal cues and body language, the things that help you in social interactions. We know these are well-established autistic traits. These are challenges of autistic people at a level that a neurotypical person wouldn't ever experience. This is a different between, this is where people go, oh no, that's introversion, that's an introvert. No, it's not. How could you even say an autistic person is a narcissist, right? In social interactions, they're able to own the room. They can just walk into any room and talk to any person. They have a great charisma. People love them, they love talking to them. They could control and manipulate anyone. For example, I've never walked into a room in my life and been warm up, warmed up and ready to go. Right? It takes time. I need ins to conversations that I can relate to that can get me going or make me feel comfortable. There's so many factors that contribute to me being even remotely part of interactions. And that's with people I know, let alone groups of new people. The sheer fact of being an autistic person diagnosed with these types of challenges makes it the complete reverse of the type of skills and reasons why a narcissist would use social interactions for. I couldn't think of anything worse than social interactions. <laughs> I avoid them. I'm seriously all about helping you increase that level of understanding and appreciation of autistic people. Please understand what I say in general terms, because we're all human and we can all have a crack at being rude and all those things. Autistic people are not rude in social interactions. They're not cold. They're not uncaring. We're not aloof or arrogant. We're autistic, diagnosed with a neurodevelopmental disability. And as a result, we face many social and communication challenges on a daily basis. Narcissists require that admiration from others in the group. They require this sense that they are better than everyone else. And they want people to, to establish that, to acknowledge that. You could give me a compliment on anything I do. I do not believe you. I do not think anything I do is remotely worthy of a compliment. There's no one on the planet I think less of than me. As an autistic person, I don't require admiration. In fact, I reject it. <laughs> I don't want it. My best case scenario at this point is getting some sort of understanding because I don't believe people are ever gonna accept me as an autistic person to be my true authentic self. I'll just go ahead and act for 99% of my life to keep you happy. Do you see the differences? It's, it's utterly ridiculous. Building on social interactions, let's talk about relationships specifically. Regarding the relationships of others, narcissists, they actually know, they're aware when they're hurting the feelings of others. And in addition to that awareness, they don't care. The bottom line is autistic people can be completely unaware of the impact our words and actions can have on the people in our life. We have the ability to tell the truth, to lie. Humans sometimes feel like they should fight or flight or freeze. This happens, it happens differently, but I'm not, I'm not at any point saying, we only tell the truth. We never try to offend people. We never try to hurt people's feelings. What a load of rubbish, I mean, we're still human. So I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, in general terms, the autistic brain isn't able to understand or be aware that our words or our actions are in some way hurtful. One of the classic ways about this is autistic people with a logical brain that's stronger or more developed than the emotional part of our brain believe black and white, concrete, logical, honest, straightforward language is key. As an autistic person, I always say, just so we're clear, my brain tells me honesty is kindness. This is a profound thing for some people. What, what, sorry? When I'm being honest, that's my brain saying, be kind. Just tell them the truth, that's kind. It blows my mind that the neurotypical world attribute lying as kindness. Don't tell them the truth, that's not kind. It's a completely different brain. Everything I'm about is this, helping you raise that level of understanding and appreciation so you can actually have some sort of acceptance rather than going, oh, I know everything about autistic people. You're not autistic, you're a narcissist. The autistic brain is wired in a way where most of the time, not all the time, but for the most part, it struggles to even be aware that telling the truth or being honest or talking in this way or talking in that way or acting in this way or that way is somehow going to hurt you. My brain says I'm being kind to you. You say it's rude, I don't, I, but then you think, oh, well, you'll learn for next time. But that, <laughs> if that's the case, then how come you keep making mistakes? We're human. Our brain takes every situation on its merits. So there's a constant failure rate. 
And then you want to lump on that, oh, not only are you a constant failure, you're always hurting people, doing the wrong thing to your typical standards, but you're not even autistic, mate. That's a lie. You're just a narcissist. You don't even deserve to be here. That's the impact it has. Another key difference is narcissists are known to use the silent treatment and guilt trips as weapons of manipulation, as ways of controlling other people. Autistic people simply do not. Again, this comes down to a breakdown in connection between neurotypical brains and autistic brains. My wife says no to me all the time. Hey, <laughs> that's not good. I have two kids. I have a life. The silent treatment is about the other person, right? If I'm becoming overwhelmed or overstimulated, I have alone time. I give myself the silent treatment. <laughs> the only guilt trips are in my life are me on me. I don't forget situations where my differences have made me feel bad or horrible or useless or worthless because of the impact it's had on others. And no matter how hard I try, it's, it's a cycle that never stops. Another key difference is narcissists tend to avoid pain, avoid suffering by the exclusion or the discarding of people in their life. Whereas in my experience, autistic people tend to navigate pain and suffering by surrounding themselves with their key core safe people. For me, my wife, my kids, my home, right? For autistic kids, it may well be a close friend, their mum, their dad, their brothers, their sisters, their grandma, their grandpa. So we don't push people away that are in our life. We cling on to those people in our life, those safe people in our life to support us and to be there for us and to love back. This is just a core, clear difference. It ends here, okay? Ignorance is not a defense to just throw out hate speech like it's nothing. Autistic people have suffered long enough from many forms of discrimination. The last thing we need is for people with zero understanding of what they're talking about, labeling us things we are not. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope you fully recover from it because I won't. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you for your support. Until my next video, we'll talk soon.